Today on Florida Sportsman Best Boat. For those who want to bring the whole family along with maximum comfort, we'll be taking a look at the Fiesta Beachcomber 24, a pontoon boat with an overall length of 24 feet, a beam of 8 feet 6 inches, and max horsepower rating of 300. Standout features on the Fiesta Beachcomber 24, a saltwater-ready pontoon that is built specifically to withstand the corrosive properties of the saltwater environment will give you peace of mind while on the water. A pontoon with no carpet is much better suited for a saltwater environment and for the fishermen on board. A fiberglass deck allows for much easier cleaning and maintenance. Group seating provides everyone on board a place to kick back and relax, a necessity if you want to bring the whole family along for a fun day on the water. If you're ready to fish big water but don't want to sacrifice inshore fishing capability, we'll be looking at the Seaborne FX25 Bay, a bay boat with an overall length of 24 feet 11 inches, a beam of 8 feet 9 inches, and max horsepower rating of 300. Standout features on the Seaborne FX25 Bay. A stepped hull adds top-end performance while also improving fuel economy, crucial when making long runs both inshore and offshore. A large bow casting deck provides plenty of room for anglers, whether scouting for cobia offshore or pitching into the mangroves inshore. A walk-up transom allows anglers to walk all the way to the stern of the boat while still being low and secure inside of the boat, important when fishing offshore. For those who want an offshore fishing machine that can accommodate the family and is easy to maintain, we'll be taking a look at the Release 301 RXS, a center console with an overall length of 30 feet 1 inch a beam of 9 feet 6 inches, and max horsepower rating of 600. Standout features on the Release 301 RXS. A functional bow design allows the bow of the boat to be transformed for the family or the fisherman from a recessed casting platform to a table and comfortable seating. Easy console access makes stowing fishing gear a breeze and provides a safe entry into the head for the family. A high freeboard adds some serious peace of mind while in blue water, a safety measure for everyone on board. Join our hosts Dave East and Rick Riles as they conduct walkthroughs and review key features, all to help you decide if this is the best boat for you. Welcome to this episode of Florida Sports and Best Boat. I'm your host Dave East, along with my co-host Captain Rick Riles. I gotta be honest with you, I really enjoy that pontoon boat even more than I expected to. You don't think about pontoon boats when you think about fishing boats. But let me tell you, I was impressed with this. It really had some neat fishing features. Had rod holders, had live wells. It was set up to take fishing. Well, it was built for fishing and it was built for a saltwater environment. So if you wanted to use a pontoon boat for its mission and for its stability and everything you would get a pontoon boat for, you're not afraid to put it in that environment. Well, it screams family, okay? But let's go to a boat that's a little more target-centered when it comes to fishing. Well, look, face it, bay boats are the most popular boats being built right now. In this Seaborn, it's a step tall, so you've got a little bit more performance out of it. Uh, you can burn a little bit less fuel, you're gonna go a little bit faster, but the basic boat, it, it's a bay boat, and it's made for one thing, fish in the bay, and if you wanna punch outside on a decent day, it's up to it. But boy, that release 301, that was an offshore boat there now. That thing really handled well and had some neat features. A 30-foot center console, that's a boat you're going to be taking offshore to fish. But we're seeing a lot more families on the water. We see it more and more. So what they've done is they put some features in there that the family's going to enjoy. And you don't always have to take that boat fishing. You can take it to the sandbar, you can go cruising, and everybody's comfortable. But if it's just the boys and you do want to go out there and chase mahi, that boat can absolutely do it. I wish you'd stop it with the sandbar and restaurant talk. Boats are platforms to fish off of, and that's what that one's designed to do. It can blue water fish in a major way, and it can hang in in some tough weather. When we come back, hosts Dave East and Rick Riles take a closer look at a boat designed to comfortably accommodate the entire family, the Fiesta Beachcomber 24. This segment brought to you by Costa Del Mar. See what's out there. We do it all. Custom fiberglass repair upholstery and canvas work, custom dash panels, specializing in insurance claims, Suzuki and Yamaha sales and service. We do it all. One stop boat shop, home of fantastic plastics and the fiberglass shop. 
Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Join our hosts Dave East and Rick Riles as they take a closer look at the Fiesta Beachcomber 24. Representing the pontoon category, the Fiesta Beachcomber 24 has an overall length of 24 feet, a beam of 8 feet 6 inches, and a max horsepower rating of 300. Designed for cruising with the family, she has a dry weight of 3,000 pounds and a fuel capacity of 32 gallons. Now, let's hear more from our hosts, Dave East and Rick Riles. Let's take a look at this 24-foot pontoon boat. This is the Beachcomber Family Fisherman by Fiesta Marine Products. And, you know, where a lot of companies out there are building pontoon boats, and they came really from up north, the freshwater market, and now they're making their saltwater version. The difference with Fiesta, they've always been a Florida company, and they've always built pontoon boats for the saltwater environment. Okay, we're sitting here on this sandbar. We're surrounded by four different pontoon boats, right? and you keep touting the fact that this one's built for salt water. What's the difference? Well, their construction method. First of all, you don't see any carpet. Right. Okay? We've got fiberglass on top of this floor, so this can be easier to maintain. It's a good anti-skid to where if it gets wet, or you, this is really a boat you can fish off of, so you can get some fish guts on it. Look underneath. Most pontoon boats, when you look underneath, you see raw wood. Not that it's not treated, it may be, but on this one, they use an aluminum that has an alloy that's made for a saltwater environment. Just look at the sheer size of their pontoons. It's 28 and a half inches around. What that does, it gets the boat a little higher in the water. This is a boat that you're gonna run in rough conditions. And the problem with the pontoon boat, if you bottom out that tunnel, it's a pretty rough ride. But the higher you can get that deck off of the water, the better ride you're gonna have. Well, I can tell you what appealed to me about this boat right away. I could see my wife getting mad at me this is my man cave. Oh yeah. It'd, it'd be hard to find something more designed to, for comfort than what this is. Well now, just beyond the comfort fact, this is a boat that you can really fish out of. You can, it'll accept a bow-mounted trolling motor. You've got provisions for two bow-mounted seats up here to fish from. You've got rod holders. You have a built-in live bait well. If the kids want to be drugged by a water toy, you got the provisions to do it back there with the tow bit. So it's not just a cruising boat or just a fishing boat. It's really one boat that can do anything the family wants to do. All right, Dave, let me welcome you aboard my future man cave. There's some stuff I want to show you. Check this out. Got my rod holder right here, my drink holder right here. Heck, I can shut, set my jar of Uncle Josh pork rinds right there. Bubba, I am ready. Well, the biggest thing about a pontoon boat is just this. It's comfort. If you're going to take a lot of people out and you want everyone to have a good, comfortable place to sit, so these boats are all about. This boat's fun. This boat isn't a serious fishing boat. You can fish from it, you can fish pretty hard, but this boat is designed to have a good time. Any pontoon boat, really you could be bringing kids on board. You want a really nice high fence. This boat absolutely has that. It's got three gates on it, plus an additional one in the back to get on and off fuse where the swim ladder is. But where the side gates come in is when you pull up to a dock. Once you've stepped on and off a dock through the side gates, you'll never have a pontoon boat without them. Man, when we were kids, how much did we laugh at Bimini Tops? <laughs> now the first thing we did when we got on the boat on a hot morning like today was put it up. Well, one thing a big Bimini Top like that will let you do is stay on the water longer. Because by 11 o'clock, 11.30, it starts getting hot and you start looking toward the dock. With something like this, you can spend all day long out on the boat. And if you get a bit of rain, it gives you some place to go kind of get out of the weather. Let me show what I'm talking about with the shade. Oh, I hate it when she sends me to my room. <laughs> I'm so uncomfortable. Well, like I said before, comfort, that's the main thing you're gonna find in a pontoon boat. This is ridiculous. This is like sitting in my living room in an easy chair. Oh yeah, and maximum seating, oh my gosh. One, you could easily seat 10 people on this boat. But not only that, with those 10 people, they're gonna bring a lot of stuff with them. Under all this plush seating, it's all storage underneath. And you know what I like they taught me too? Is this, does not reach all the way down to the deck. Now, your first thought may be, oh no, water's gonna get in there, it's gonna get wet. But what it does here is it doesn't stay, Dave. It's open in the back so it just goes out. Plus, there's nothing to rot because they don't build these seats out of wood. It's all composite. So, I mean, this as long as you keep your, your um, vinyl protected, this thing will last for a long, long time. You're gonna be bringing your family on board. Women, especially small kids, they're gonna want a place with a potty. They made provisions for that. Actually, this area in the back right behind you, it's a room that pops up, give them some privacy, but when you're not using it, it's down, it's out of the way, you really don't even know it's there. Plus, it makes another nice little sun pad to go sit on. It's called maximizing your space. I can't think of a more perfect model name than Family Fisher. 
because that's really what this boat does. You can take the family, but you can also take the boat fishing. So they've taken both worlds and they combined them. I think they've come up with a great layout. When we return, host Dave East and Rick Ryle step aboard a boat built to handle offshore waters without sacrificing inshore capability. The Seabourne FX25 Bay. This segment brought to you by Tough Coat, the world's number one rubberized non-skid coating. Why are more and more boat owners using Tough Coat Marine, the world's number one rubberized non-skid? Because it's so attractive and so easy to apply. The rubber granules used only in Tough Coat Marine is extremely comfortable to my bare feet and knees. From pontoons to houseboats, flats boats to sport fishers, commercial to recreation, even hides nasty spider cracks. For all boat decks or docks, Tough Coat Marine, the world's number one rubberized non-skid. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Join our hosts Dave East and Rick Riles as they step aboard the Seabourne FX25 Bay. Representing the 25 to 27 foot class in the bay boat category, the Seabourne FX25 Bay has an overall length of 24 feet 11 inches, a beam of 8 feet 9 inches, and a max horsepower rating of 300. Built for tackling both inshore and offshore fishing excursions, she has a draft of 11 inches a dead rise of 17 degrees, a dry weight of approximately 2,600 pounds, and a fuel capacity of 75 gallons. Now, let's hear more from our hosts, Dave East and Rick Riles. You want a bay boat that's high performance, can fish inshore and mix it up with the big boys offshore? This Seabourne FX25 absolutely fits the bill. This boat is a step in the hull. What that does, it lessens the drag, the boat's going to perform better, you don't need as much horsepower to push it, but it's not going to take as much fuel either. So the boat's already fuel efficient having the big four stroke on the back, you add in the stepped hull, this boat has an unbelievable range. Right, and the reasoning behind the stepped hull is less wetted surface. And we're seeing it everywhere. We're seeing it from 40 footers to 20 footers. It's really caught on in the bay boat industry. Well, if you look at the width too of this front deck, the bow is big on this boat. It's got a lot of flair, keeps it dry. But if you want to put multiple anglers up here, you've got plenty of room. They're not in each other's way, that's for sure. Your gaff man can run up here and gaff a fish. Doesn't matter where your angler's standing up here, he's got room to do it from. But let me tell you something. They didn't waste the space beneath this. This may be the key to the to this uh, casting platform is what they did under what you see. This large hatch right here, it's got a lift out storage box, you trolling motor batteries, and you can put three wide if you want to put one of the big 36 uh, volt trolling motors up there. And your wire run isn't that long. And that's important because if you put the batteries further back, you can have a lot more current loss going forward with a longer run of wire than with a shorter run having the batteries right here. You look at this live well up here, you got to realize this boat's 25 feet long. I don't want to walk all the way to the back every time I need a live shrimp. Well, you don't have to because there's another live well under the front seat of the console. There's actually three live wells in this boat. You know, you and I have been around so long, you know what we've seen? What's that? Think about it. Remember the original step, okay? We thought it was such a great idea to have right. a step to get up here, okay? Well, how much of a better idea is it for your step to turn into seating for your entire family? That's an evolution. Nobody thought of that when we first came out with bay boats 15 years ago. Well, what I like about it too, you haven't given up anything. We've still got rod lockers on either side. They're insulated so they can be used as a long fish box. You've got an insulated cooler in the center, which could be a smaller fish box, like you always say for my little fish. Like I said, we have another live well in the front seat of the console. That's two. There's a third one in the back. But let's step back to the console. You know, the center console is not really a whole lot you can say that that can improve on it. It fits the boat. You've got a lot of room to walk by. You have a side entry door. I do like the fact that there is a head down there. You may not use it, but the fact that if you have girls on board, that just having the head down there sometimes is enough to give them the, the sense of security when they're willing to go out. Well, you're right, and it, it, it may be the selling feature that brings mama involved in the conversation, right, right. As, as we know. But let me show you something they did right with this rocket launcher. Everybody loves live bait fishing. You catch a big net full of pogies, put them on the deck, then you got to pick them all up. Slide this forward, open your live well, in the net goes. Your bait will live longer because it won't rub off their slime on your non-skid, and your net is so much easier to empty, keeps it from snagging anywhere. Very good idea. Well, that's what the fisherman sees. You know what I see? This is cool. I've got a little window here in the back. It's acrylic. I can look through. You can check on your baits. You can see the fish swimming around. You know what your water level is all time, and you know how many baits are left. You know their condition. Let me show you something back here. Have a seat. You know what you're missing? 
A rear casting platform. A rear casting platform. This is a true sport fish transom. I think for a lot of applications, rear casting platforms are wasted space. You've brought your helm back. Your boat's very seaworthy. She's going to ride good. You're not going to pound. You've got plenty of room back here, and you're not standing on top of the boat. You're in the boat just like you are in a sport fish. I tell you what, I think it's a great feature for this boat. And little things, here we go again. I like having a cutting board right here. I like having that size fish box, okay? You can use that. That's a fine box for, for well, it's too big for most fish you catch, but I can put fish in there. I think they did this transom very, very well. Well, going back to little things you talk about all the time, I've got a freshwater wash down, I've got a saltwater wash down, we've got three live wells, we've got multiple fish boxes. You're in a 25 foot footprint, so the boat is not huge. It's still manageable to trailer. You don't have to have a special pickup truck to pull it, but this boat has some big water legs. And what I mean by that is, you can clear the inlet, you can take this boat out offshore, or I don't know that the river could ever get too rough for it. Well, you and I have said it before, and this boat fits it, she fishes bigger than she is, okay? I think they've dialed this FX25 just about right. When we come back, host Dave East and Rick Riles check out a boat engineered with easy maintenance in mind for the Blue Water Angler and their family, the Release 301 RXS. This segment brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. At Yamaha, reliability is a family tradition. Meet the next generation. Four new advanced technology inspired inline four cylinder performers. Bred from the reliability and boater satisfaction that is part of Yamaha's DNA. They prove that when power gets lighter, faster, stronger and smarter, boating gets even better. And more satisfying for boaters like you. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Join our hosts Dave East and Rick Riles as they check out the Release 301 RXS. Representing the 28 to 30 foot class in the center console category, the Release 301 RXS has an overall length of 30 feet 1 inch, a beam of 9 feet 6 inches, and a max horsepower rating of 600. Designed to handle blue water and comfort, she has a dead rise of 22.5 degrees a dry weight of approximately 5,500 pounds, and a fuel capacity of 220 gallons. Now, let's hear more from our hosts, Dave East and Rick Riles. All right, we're aboard the release 301 RXS, and for a guy who's defined his mission as wanting to go offshore, this boat absolutely fits the bill. Oh, you're almost missing it, Dave. He doesn't want to just go offshore, he wants to go anywhere offshore, okay? There's no such thing as, well, let's fish at 30 miles out, I don't know if I want to do that. You can do it all with this boat, but let me tell you what we've learned about boats over the years. There's only one thing that salt water doesn't destroy. You know what it is? Salt water. Salt water. Exactly. exactly right. This boat has everything we need for a great day's fishing and nothing that's unnecessary. There's no nothing added to it that'll get in your way that the salt water will affect. Well, you're correct. And also, it, it's really about the limit of the size you're going to push comfortably with a pair of outboards. I mean, here's a boat that it's really big, it's got high freeboard, you'd feel really, really comfortable in this boat offshore in rough conditions, but yet you haven't made that monster leap into a boat that's running triple outboards, needs a huge trailer, maybe you can't even trailer it and you have to leave it in a slip. Let's go through some of the features of this release that we like, which really sets us apart and defines the mission that we're talking about. Well, if you want to do more than offshore fish out of the boat, you got to have a place for your family, you got to have a place for guests to sit. That's why we're seeing so many boats now include bow seating. Well, how proud was released to show us what they've done up here. You and I refer to it as convertible seating. It's really well laid out. Take the pedestal out, drop the table down, now you've got a recessed casting deck. You've got enough freeboard as a recessed casting deck to keep you inside the boat. But yet, like you said, you still can throw a cast net and clear the bow rail. You still can pull up and cast to a Kobe or something like that. So to call this bow section convertible, I think that's really the best description. Let's move aft and look at the center console. There's a reason they made the door like it is. It's big and it's on the front and it gives you maximum access. Let me show you what I'm talking about. What's the use of having a console this large if you can't get into it? When you've got a big door like this on the front of the console, it makes access to the head a lot easier. Plus, if you're gonna store things in there, this is the way to go in and out of the console, especially in rough conditions. Not only that, think about bean bags. How many guys carry bean bags with them? Okay, mm -hmm. consoles can hold them, but you can't get them through most doors. This is ideal for storing bigger items. All right, let's move aft. You know that high freeboard you were talking about? 
Look how secure you feel in this boat. If we were out in rough conditions right now, or if I was fighting a big fish, I've got plenty to lean against, and I'm really not worried about water coming in. No, it'd take a heck of a wave to break into this cockpit. But let me tell you where it really shows, Dave. If you come back here, you've got your platform with your transom door. Now, if you're a guy like me and you catch billfish by the hundreds, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's nice to be able to step back here and bill a fish. You're not worried about the fact you can't reach him from here because you don't need to. You're gonna bill a fish, you're gonna gaff a big fish if he's big enough. That's exactly what that transom door is for. Well, also too, you're gonna use this boat with the family occasionally, or you may dive, or you may snorkel. So much easier to get in and out of the boat using that transom door than it is to try and come up over the side. If without the transom door, to me, the high freeboard's almost a minus because I have to be able to reach the water. With the transom door, so much easier. On the aft side of the console, you've got a nice big flat area here for all of your flush mounted electronics. But just look, it, here we go. Everything you need, nothing you don't. You can put your screens there. There's nothing else there to worry about. I tell you where they did splurge, how luxurious is this seating? Keep in mind, this boat's at home 50 miles offshore. You're going to want to be comfortable all the way there. Well, the, the fact that they've split them like this, if one person wants to stand and one person wants to sit, you can do that. If this was a solid bench all the way across, you couldn't. You'd both have to stand or both have to sit. When they're separated like this, you have a choice. All right, you know, we've seen a lot of boats with really complicated stern seating. Why do you need more than this? you got a fold-down cushion. It's a great place to sit, but when it's not necessary, it folds out of the way. Drop it and fish. Tell you what, I've heard a lot of controversy, too, about clear lids on live wells. Something I had never thought about. You put a clear lid on this live well, think about the water temp inside, how it heats up. But because Release builds fishing boats, they understand 1,100 gallon per hour pump in here shoots through that live well. That means before the water ever has a chance to heat up, it's gone, it's out, and there's fresh water coming in. Keeps your baits better. It's just one more thing that works out for the fishermen. Well, too, you're at the maximum size you can comfortably push with a pair of twin outboards. So you really haven't made that real big commitment into a giant offshore boat, but you've got a boat that can certainly take you out there. Anywhere you want to go. If you want more information on the three boats that you've seen in this episode, or any of the other boats that we've tested this season of Best Boat, go to our website, floridasportsman.com. Or we'll see you next week on another episode of Florida Sportsman Best Boat. When filming for Florida Sportsman Best Boat, the cast and crew docked and dined at Fort Pierce City Marina in Fort Pierce, Florida, featuring a full-service, state-of-the-art dock system within walking distance from excellent restaurants and historic downtown Fort Pierce. Turn to Florida Sportsman for the best in boating and fishing coverage.